Welcome in Harp on Sports, the bar Harp on Sports Media Podcast and Audio Network. If you haven't done so yet, follow, share, subscribe, like, like, follow, share, subscribe at Harp on Sports Twitter, at Harp on Sports on the Instagram, harponsports.com, the Harp on Sports YouTube page. And continue on and continue on and continue on. You know how to be a part of it. Um, Gonna have a good one today. Oh, we're gonna have a good one today. A little baseball boldness. Um, the Jaguars jettison Unique and Gakwe in a game of Clue. A little bit of game of Clue. Uh, there is protesting the coronavirus. A little back and forth here. Gonna get to this coming up here. I always play the hits. I always play what's on the marquee. Always. I don't avoid big subjects ever. If you've watched any of these videos, if you've listened to any of the podcasts, if you listen to any of my shows, by the way, Harp on Sports returns a week from uh, Tuesday, nine days away. I don't avoid big topics. I look at it. You have a responsibility if you're on the air to talk about big topics. If you avoid them, well, guess what? Shouldn't be on the air. So the primary number with all of this, the, the primary focus with all of this has been the coronavirus and now protests and Black Lives Matter, and it shouldn't be talked about. But that's not the big story today. It's not. Not right now. I'm going to start off with baseball because in the American League, the team that's on our station, the Tampa Bay Rays, are in first place. Second best record in baseball. Second best record in baseball. Now, I've got a couple of baseball things for you. The Rays have the second best record in baseball. Here's what's fascinating about it as opposed to the Dodgers. The Rays have won 24 games. Guess how many of those wins have come from starting pitchers? Rays have 24 wins. How many of those 24 wins have come from starting pitchers? Venture a guess. Nine. Nine of the, the, the Tampa Bay Rays' 24 wins have come from starting pitching. Nine. That means 15 have come from the pen. That's a fascinating number. That's a fascinating number. The majority of your wins tend to come from the guys on the mound. Now, seven inning games have a lot to do with that. Shortened innings, shortened starts, but when you have the when you have the second best record in baseball, and nine of your twenty four wins come from starters, that's a pretty amazing stat. So, how are they getting it done? Bullpen pitching number one, fifteen. They've got the most wins in baseball from their pen. Boom. How else are they doing it? A very good ERA. Fourth in baseball and team ERA. And you start to look around. Offensively, nothing to write home about. Nothing to write home about. In terms of strikeouts, batting average, on-base percentage, all of OPS, all of those numbers, in the middle or to the bottom. In the middle or to the bottom. So how are they doing it? Well, they're scoring a lot of runs. They're in the top five in baseball in ERA, and they're in the top five in runs scored. You combine those two, amount of earned runs given up, amount of runs scored, you're going to be in good shape. But here, at this point of the year, if I had to pick a team to go to the World Series out of the American League, it wouldn't be the race. It would be the Indians. Why? Indians, by far and away, the best team in baseball in terms of pitching. By far and away. And then they're the top three defensively. If you're number one in the league in pitching, number one in baseball and pitching, and you combine that with the top three in defensive numbers, look, if I've got great pitching and I don't make errors. Guess what? I just got to nibble offensively. I just got to nibble around offensively. So we're past the halfway point. Just I think it's so interesting that the Rays are the best team in the American League, second best team in baseball in terms of record. And then you jump over to the National League where the Dodgers are the best team in baseball. And you look at where their wins come from. They've got 26 wins and 17 of them come from the starters. So 17 of the 26 wins from the Dodgers come from starters. Nine of the 24 wins from the Rays come from starters. So there's a difference between the American and the National League. Those two teams meet in the World Series. Ooh, baby. So there you go. Rays are a decent baseball team. Great. No-name team. A couple of guys on there. But. Boy, imagine that organization could do if it had a park and people come and do it. But nonetheless, there you go. Oh, speaking of this, one more thing with baseball before I get to Ngakwe. Mike Trout, sometime in the next 
week, maybe by next weekend, we'll hit his 300th home run. Mike Trout's got, what, 297 home runs right now. He turned 29 last month. Or I should say 29 uh, yeah, at the beginning of this month. Three weeks ago, Mike Trout turned 29. Mike Trout will become the 10th youngest player ever to hit 300 home runs. He will. Those above him on that list include Jimmy Fox, Ken Griffey Jr., John Carlos Stanton, two years ago did it. And John Carlos Stanton is going to be a couple of months, about 70, 80 days younger than Mike Trout when he did it. Difference is John Carlos Stanton basically can only DH now. Mike Trout's still the best or one of the top center fielders in baseball. 29 years old. The reason I bring that up is sometime next year, Mike Trout, maybe this year, but he's really going to have to book it. Not going to get there this year. He's going to get to 1,500 hits. So before his 30th birthday, Mike Trout is going to be well over 300 home runs, 1,500 hits. Does he have a chance at tracking down Barry Bonds? Does he have a chance for 700-plus home runs? If he stays healthy, you bet. You bet. I get a kick out of the always oh, they don't make the playoffs, so the Angels don't win. You know, Ted Williams, Red Sox, when they go to the World Series three times, twice. So what? So what? That's one sport that having a championship doesn't instill your greatness. It really, really doesn't. It's nice to have, but nobody looks back on Ernie Banks's career as less of a career because he didn't win a World Series. Nobody looks back on Tony Gwynn's career as less of a career because he didn't win a World Series. At least I don't. Let me look around and say Ichiro's not one of the greatest hitters of all time because he didn't win a World Series. Come on. Be nice. It's nice to have, but not the end-all be-all. So there's that. It's interesting because I'm watching Mike Trout playing again. He's going he's gonna to end up with 20 home runs in a shortened season, if not more than that. He's going to hit his 300th home run. Mike Trout, the way he plays, you watch him play, it's just something that slides under the radar. Mike Trout is Willie Mays. Mike Trout's a modern-day Willie Mays. He is. That's who he is. So he'll be the 10th youngest player ever to hit 300 home runs. I'm trying to think of the other guys. Mel Ott, Jimmy Fox, Ken Griffey Jr., Andrew Jones, John Carlos Stanton on that list. Um, Albert Pujols on that list as well. So tough to get there. Tough to get there. And if he keeps up this pace, he's got a chance in his late 30s to get there. He really, really does. So there's it for baseball. A little baseball boldness to start the podcast. Also, as we shift gears here to the NFL, Unique Ngakwe finally moved by the Jaguars. Said way back in January. Said this way back in January. We are talking about what the Jaguars are going to do. At best, they'd get a second round pick between where? 10, 22. 10 and 22. Now you throw in a conditional fit that can move up. Great. We nailed that. One of the only people to get it right. They're going to get a first. No, they're not. They're not. To get a first-round pick, you need generational talent. Khalil Mack, generational talent. Jamal Adams, generational talent. Nikon Ngakwe is very good. Good, very good. He's not generational talent. He's not. There's no metric for him. You know what the metric is for Ngakwe? It's a created one. It is. It's a created one. I always get a kick out of that when I was covering the Jags on a day-to-day basis. Uh, when you get a stat line in Gakwe, he becomes the only player in the NFL. Or only the third player in the NFL to have 10 sacks, five forced fumbles, four tackles, more than four yards or four tackles for loss, and two interceptions. It's like, what type of metric is that? Just pull it out numbers. He's the only one to do that. Yeah, well, I create a metric and pigeonhole you into a corner and get anybody in one of those metrics. Okay, yeah, great. He got all those things. Good for him. But for this, the Jaguars, the second-round pick from the Vikings, you bet. Good. Good for them. He didn't want to be here. Didn't want to be here. Well, he left a lot of money on the table. Missed the point. He didn't want to be here. At the end of last year, I don't want to be there. I've been in jobs. I've taken jobs for money. Not a ton, but I've taken jobs for money. The job that I worked at that paid me the most in my career was the job that the people cared the least about the sports station. That's a true story. 
that I worked with, my coworkers. Now the people on my station, the people that I worked with. Be careful. Oh, they pay you the most. Yeah, but do they care? How many times did the Jaguars pay the most? Because they gave Nick Foles. Look at the big money that they gave him Malik Jackson. Look at the big money that they paid. Do you consider those guys happy here? Or happy with the Jaguars organization? No, well, they're prepared to pay Yannick Ngakwe. He wasn't going to be happy here. He wasn't. So Ngakwe takes, what, a $4 million pay cut to go to Minneapolis? Didn't sign his didn't sign his franchise tender in time? Okay, so he's making, what, $13 million there? Well, he left some money on the table? Yeah, he did. He did. He goes there, and he has an incredible season. They could franchise him again next year. The salary cap could drop. You're right. When it's all said and done, he could lose about eight to ten million dollars last year and this year. He could. He lose eight to ten million dollars if he doesn't get a long term deal done. He gets a long term deal done. Oh baby. Oh baby. He gets a long term and he gets his five years a hundred million dollars with fifty million guaranteed. So he has a long term deal done with the Vikings, a team that has a legitimate chance to go to the postseason and do some damage. Or he could have had a long term deal done here in Jacksonville and what? Not done anything for three or four years? You didn't want to be here. You didn't want to be in Florida. You didn't want to be with the Jaguars organization. I don't fault him one bit. Well, he left money on. It, it, isn't that such a way of thinking of this fan base, of that organization? Like, well, he left money on the table. He could have made more money here. He wants to get paid. He wants to get paid. Well, he wanted to get paid. You bet he did. But then after last year, look, last year it was about getting paid. The minute the season over, it was over, it wasn't about getting paid. Those are two totally different instances. You ever change your mind on something? Hey, I really want to do this. I really want to do this. You take a step back and go, you know what? Maybe that's not what I want to do. Ever change jobs? Ever get a different type of car? Ever get, ready for this, divorced? You switch your ideals. Last year is about getting paid. When the year is over, it doesn't matter what you pay me. I don't want to be there anymore. I don't. He didn't want to be with Jaguars anymore, so he's not. But this whole thing, he could have made more money if he'd have been here. It was At the end of the football season, it wasn't about the money anymore. It was about being in a, in a place where he saw J- – think about, think about it from his perspective. Think about it from his perspective. He's looked around the last three or four years, and he saw Jalen Ramsey, an ugly mess with Jalen Ramsey. It didn't work out fine. Ugly thing with Dante Fowler Jr. a couple years ago. They traded Dante Fowler Jr. away. Didn't bother Ngakwe very much. Then you look around. Miles Jack gets a gigantic payday at the linebacker position. Fine. All right. All right. I want mine, but you're going to pay him. That's fine. That's fine. Then what? Then you see Calais Campbell traded away. Telvin Smith has a mental breakdown. Whatever happened with Telvin Smith? No, didn't, didn't realize he was an animal abuser and a pervert. But he was. And is. So, and Gakwe looks around and goes, wait a second, this entire A.J. Boye traded away? <laughs> I mean, if, if I'm in Gakwe, look around and go, everybody's been traded away, everybody's left, I don't want to be a part of this anymore. You can be the highest paid player. Yeah, on a 3-13 and 13 team? Pass. The end of the day, Unique and Gakwe chose to make $13 million for a chance to win and go deep in the postseason over making $17 million and winning two games. If anybody, and this is where fans get in the way, and this is why I'm so glad that my fandom is pretty much dissipated in broadcasting. It has. My fandom is pretty much dissipated because my heart isn't hurt when players don't want to be on what were my favorite teams. When somebody wants out of town, it doesn't bother me. People are too emotionally attached to it. They are. Ngakwe didn't want to be a part of it. He's gone. Like How dare he do, do, does what? Remember, remember when a decade ago LeBron took less money, took $30, $40 million less money to go to Cleveland or to go to Miami than stay in Cleveland. $30, $40 million less to go to Miami. He, Chris Bosch, Dwayne Wade all took less money to play on that team. All took less money. And got destroyed for it. Oh, they're just they're doing this and they're just combining all this talent just to win. Isn't that what you want? Take less money. Show me it's about winning. That's what Ngakwe did. Took less money because he wanted to win. You can fall in for that. Remember Gary Payton, Carl Malone at the end of their career signed right for the veteran minimum so they could play for the Lakers with Kobe for a chance to win a title. 
Kobe and Shaq, Carl Malone came in, Gary Payton came in. It's like, oh, Pistons beat them. Pistons beat them. But that whole thing about, oh, look at them. They're just trying to oh, create an all-star team to win a championship. Isn't that what you want? Take less money. Kyle Long did it. Took less money. It was a Chris Long. Chris Long? My bad. Chris Long took less money to go to the Patriots for a year so he could win. So Ngakwe's taking less money so he can win. It's a bad thing. Oh, I hate him. <laughs> okay. Somebody's not happy. Let him go. So the Jags get a second and a fifth. If the Vikings go to the postseason, it's conditional. In 2022, it starts to move up the board. It's a good move. You don't want to be here anymore. But this whole delusion about, remember, up on sports, said it in January. When I was still in Jacksonville, you were never going to get more than a two or higher than a two. You weren't. We're going to get a first. Two firsts. Remember that? Two firsts. God. Uh, lastly, a game of Clue. Game of Clue. The NHL, the NBA, Major League Baseball teams sat out. One, in some cases, two nights this past week and i saw and there's a great line it's not mine people that don't get it don't know they don't get it people that don't get it don't know that they don't get it a dog doesn't know it's a dog a dog has no comprehension of the cosmos and planet and stars neither does an elephant neither does a cat the only creature on this planet that does are human beings Human beings are the only animals that can look up in the sky and go, there are solar systems out there in other galaxies. No other animal can do it. And then there's certain an human beings that think the world's flat. So you have, you know, it's a sliding scale. The people that think the earth is flat are the same people that, after these players sat out a day or two, said, well, they're right back to work. They didn't accomplish anything. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. They accomplished more than you could possibly imagine. More than you possibly could imagine. You just don't understand impact. Impact is not changing a culture in a day or in a game or in a week. It takes a long time to change culture. It takes a long time to reinvent yourself. It takes a long time to make change. It does. That's why you see like carbon emissions and accords and deals that are done for carbon footprints and reducing gas emissions and greenhouse gases like by the year 2030 we're going to do a b and c it's like 10 years that takes a long time to do so the players sitting out a game what did it do well it allowed a bunch of people to complain i hate those spoiled brats i don't watch them anyway I, i'll never watch again you don't watch anyway I, I, my favorite thing about that last week is i'm never going to watch you don't watch it anyway It'd be like if they changed the, the the packaging on or changed the recipe in mayonnaise. Well, I can't stand that. You don't eat it anyway. I don't eat it anyway. Why do I care? Oh, I don't, they're just a spoil. It's a way for people to thumb their nose and look down on minority men. It's what it is. It's what it is. They shouldn't be protesting. There's a time and a place. Where? Colin Kaepernick did it quiet during the national anthem. Peace. We, we are okay with peaceful protesters. That's a crock. Peaceful protest. We're okay with peaceful protesters. They boycotted a game. They're going to make up the game. Fans aren't going to these games. Think about this. Think about all of this that was with the protests last week. It's like, oh well, they can't. I can't believe they set out a game. Well, what about the fans? You're not. Nobody's in attendance. Well, well, this is a bunch of spoiled brats. They should be grateful for they are. They are. Don't you want people that are grateful to give back? Who has a bigger impact? Professional athletes or Joe Billy Bob on the street? Hmm? The athletes set out a game or two. What I thought was interesting is the athletes set out a game or two. Four SEC teams didn't practice. Four, I didn't hear a peep. I didn't hear a peep. Four SEC football teams set out practices. Didn't hear a peep. Didn't heard plenty, though, on the professional athletes. Raining down on the NBA. You know what's interesting? Heard a bunch of complaining about the NBA players sitting out. Didn't hear much about the NHL players sitting out. 
heard a lot of complaints about NBA basketball teams in this state not playing. Didn't hear anything about the Lightning sitting out Friday night. Huh. Wonder what's different. Huh. Hmm. Hmm. Wonder what's different there. Let's see what could it be. Lastly, a lot of people ripping on the Big Ten. The Big Ten blunder, the Big Ten joke, the Big Ten blew it. We'll see. We'll see. I see Alabama had another thousand students test positive for this thing. This is one of those things if you're the Big Ten, everybody's ripping on the Big Ten, network hosts across the country ripping on the Big Ten. And I have affinity for the Big Ten. I grew up in the Midwest. So the Big Ten canceled early. They walked away. They said, we're going to do the right thing here. We're going to stay the course. We're going to do the right thing. We're going to do the right thing. Then you hear the rumors. They could start as early as Thanksgiving. They came out and said, that's not true. You have players suing the conference for not letting them play. If the SEC and the college football season gets canceled before the halfway mark, I'm going to be interested to see what those people say to the Big Ten. And then I'm sorry he's not going to cut it. Think everybody ripping on the Big Ten right now. You better hope. You better hope that your season finishes. History is not kind. If the SEC, the ACC, the Big 12 have to cancel their season, history is not going to be kind to any of you. None of you. Harp on Sports, the podcast. Harp on Sports, the bar. You can check it out. Spotify, Buzzsprout, Apple Podcast, HarpOnSports.com, the YouTube page, HarpOnSports.com, the website, at Harp on Sports, Twitter, at Harp on Sports, Instagram. Follow, share, like, share, follow, like, subscribe. We'd appreciate it. Now, here we are. September, right around the corner. The next time we talk to you again on this podcast, it will be September. Enjoy your week. Remember, stay clean, stay strong, stay focused. Frankenstein, have fun with your friends.